Today we are checking out some more epic ITX builds from you guys and the video that we did last month on this, if you haven't seen that yet, you can go back and watch that. But this will become a monthly series and uh, yeah, the last video got a pretty decent response. There are over 500 submissions and this video and the last video, we cannot possibly cover that many builds, but uh, there are some definitely more interesting and exciting builds that we will be covering today. Personally, I think it's really interesting to see what you guys are building. And I think it's pretty helpful for beginners as well, who might be looking to build in a specific case or with a specific cooler. That way they can see how to set it up and you know, maybe if I have any input on that as well. So again, we have a ton of builds to go through today. Let's take a look. And let's just jump right in because there are a ton of builds that we can possibly pick out from here. Uh, this one here from Christian Peck is really interesting. It's not a completed build as he says here, but I think it's interesting just to see what kind of uh, you know work people are kind of creating. This here is a custom 13 liter case that he built. And I guess the thing that I'm most interested in here is the custom pump res that he built uh, for the front. Personally, I think this is really interesting because it solves the biggest problem for small form factor cases. And that's where do you put the pump and reservoir combo in something like a T1 or an N case M1 or a ghost S1, for example, this is the perfect solution for that. Uh, but it's just a shame that there's no product out there or company out there making exactly that. So if you're a company who is interested in creating something for those small cases, uh, I'm not sure what the possible uh, return on your investment would be, but there is a market out there. Me personally, I would be really interested in building with something like this. So Christian Peck, if you're watching, definitely think about expanding from your custom case to maybe support other cases in my opinion. Otherwise, great job, Christian. I uh, just wanted to quickly show that before we move on because again, great work. And I love seeing custom water cooled parts like this. And then right below that, we have this build from DMJ. So this is a build in the NKSM1 V6.1, which is the newest revision of the NKS, I believe. Uh, he's using an Intel 9900K F CPU, ASUS Strix RTX 2080 Ti. He said he's put uh, liquid metal on that. Uh, not sure I would recommend that on an RTX 2080 Ti. It's probably not worth it. Uh, but hey, maybe you can let me know your results down below. Uh, 32 gigabytes of 3800 megahertz RAM, and he's got a two terabyte SSD in there as well. So let's take a look at how he's got this set up. So what he's done here with the graphics card is actually really interesting, and it's a very popular thing, something I might do a video on quite soon. Uh, it's popular for those who have graphics cards that are around two and a half to three slots. Not sure I'd recommend this for a two slot graphics card. You probably don't need to do this in that case. But what he's done here is completely remove the shroud and fans from the graphics card, in this case, an ASUS RTX 2080 Ti, and he's replaced those with two full-size Noctua fans. Now, this is actually a really effective mod to improve the thermal and noise performance of your GPU in the NKS M1. Uh, you could do this for other cases as well, but specifically for the NKS M1 where you do have that exact clearance where you're able to do this, it is very effective. So if you do have a two and a half slot card, definitely give this a go. I have done a video very similar to this where we install the Arctic Accelero 3 cooler on a GTX 1080 Ti, I believe it was, and the thermal and noise performance there was seriously unbelievable. I'll leave a link to that video down below. I will note that the thermal performance that I saw with the kind of fan setup that he has wasn't that great. So he's got the fans kind of coming from underneath the case and then pushing onto the heatsink. I actually saw a significantly better thermal and noise performance by flipping the fans the complete other direction. I know it sounds completely wrong to have the fans exhausting the hot air from the heatsink, but trust me on this one, uh, definitely give that a try. Uh, I think that'll improve the graphics card performance quite a bit. So like I said, I might do a bit of a tutorial or guide uh, focused on GPU de-shrouding. I did recently pick up this, which is the three slot EVGA XC Ultra RTX 2080 Ti. So you should be able to do this. It is a three slot card, but I believe the heatsink is only 2.7 or so slot here. Uh, that could be a fairly popular video. Let me know if you guys want me to do that down below. Otherwise, super clean build here from DMJ in the end case. 
Uh, I'll also note that he custom made his liquid cooler using the LT Solo from AlphaCool. So the main advantages of doing that is that you now have access to whatever radiator and tubing that you wanna pair it with. And I've also done a video on that down below. Uh, otherwise, yeah, super clean build. Uh, let's see what else you guys have been building. And again, just scrolling a couple down, we have this build from Odin's Playground. This is a super clean Ghost S1 build using the i7-9700K, uh, the ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming, great choice there. Uh, he's using the Noctua L12S CPU cooler with a Chromax swapped fan and an RTX 2070 Super. I'm really interested to see how he's got the CPU cooler set up here in the Ghost S1 because technically the Noctua L12S is not supported in the Ghost S1. It's a few millimeters too tall. So just a kind of public service announcement for those who didn't know, if you wanna get the L12S to fit in the Ghost S1, you kind of have to squash it down and bend the heat pipes a bit and pair it with a low profile memory kit. But in saying that, it is a pretty easy thing to do. And what you are left with is pretty much the best airflow stock configuration for the Ghost S1. That is without adding any top hats to the Ghost S1, without adding any liquid cooling, this is pretty much the best airflow and thermal setup that you could put in this case. And one more thing you might need to do here is actually cut away some of the fan depending on which motherboard you're using. So if you have quite tall uh, VRM heat sinks, uh, you might need to do the same thing that he's done here. The bottom fan that he's got there is also mounted in exhaust. So that's gonna encourage airflow through the side panels and also the exhaust flow from the graphics card. Overall, uh, he has a super, super tidy build here in the Ghost. Not sure it gets uh, much better than a top-down view of a Ghost S1 like this just super, super satisfying to look at. Next up, we have this Fractal Design Node 202 build, which was just a couple down. Uh, really interesting because you don't see too many Node 202 builds in the kind of enthusiast ITX space. Uh, but this one is pretty interesting because what he's done again is deshrouded the graphics card. So the RTX 2080 Ti in the Node 202, just don't do it. Like that is a seriously power hungry and thermally hot card uh, and the Node 202 doesn't really provide you with the cooling capacity for that graphics card. But if you are willing to mod the graphics card and deshroud it, which is exactly what we were talking about in one of the previous builds, you can make it very, very viable. So a quick rundown of this build, he's got the Intel 8700K on the ASUS Strix uh, ROG Z390i motherboard. Uh, he's got that overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz and he's using the Noctua NHL9i cooler with the NFA9 by, he says he says by 25, which means 25 millimeters thick, but I believe that's the slim fan that he's got that on there. And he mentions that he's also 3D printed a shroud around the heatsink to maybe encourage airflow in a certain direction. Uh, but the card that he's using is the EVGA RTX 2080 Ti for the Win 3 Ultra. So exact same thickness as this one here. It's a shame that we can't see the other side of the build to see what kind of fans he's using here with the graphics card, but I believe just any pair of regular thickness fans will fit there, 120 mil, uh, just as you would normally put in the Fractal Node 202. And just to close off, I'll say that this is probably the first RTX 2080 Ti build in the Node 202 that I've seen that I've kind of been confident in the thermal and noise performance. Uh, so yeah, really great job here. Now we do have a very similar end case build here as one that we looked at before. This one is from Jonah. Uh, again, he's used an RTX card here that he's deshrouded the fans from. So he's taken the shroud and the stock fans off and he's used his own fans, mounted them directly underneath the card. And as we saw, that's gonna give you much better thermal and noise performance. Testing on that coming soon when we do get a video going. But one thing I just wanted to mention for this build, because I do know the Noctua C14S is a very popular choice for the end case. If you're using it like uh, Jonah is here, I think you'll have to default to a 120 mil fan, uh, which is going to be a bit of a downgrade in terms of thermals. If you do want to use the stock 140 mil fan that comes with the C14S, and that's going to give you kind of the best air cooled setup that you could probably get in the MK M1, you can just reposition the power supply to the front of the case, and that will give you much more clearance uh, in this section of the case. And then you can use that uh, much more powerful 140 mil fan. He's running a Ryzen 7 3700X plugged into the Crosshair 8 Impact motherboard. Definitely a pricey choice there. 
Uh, he's got 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory, 3200 MHz CL14 there, that's a nice choice. Uh, RTX 2080 Ti Strix, like we saw, uh, and he's got quite a bit of storage there as well. And in terms of the airflow setup, it looks like he's gone for a rear intake and then a bottom exhaust, which I've personally found to work really well if you are going for this kind of graphics card cooling setup. And as I'm scrolling down to check out some more builds, there's this one posted from Tommy with absolutely no context of what's going on here, no parts list or anything like that. Uh, he's just got a 360 mil radiator, a custom loop kind of just chilling outside of his Ghost S1, uh, which, I mean, at this point, just build in a mid tower, man. Like you've got a 360 mil cooler here and then you've probably got another 240 at the bottom. Like, is it really ITX still if you have the, you know, a 360 mil rad just hanging out the top of the case? Man, maybe you should explore some other options here. At the end of the day, it's your build. You can do whatever you want, but it's just not the most practical way to use the Ghost S1. And how much cooling do you really need? Like I've done a 240 mil custom loop in the Ghost S1 with a 2080 Ti and 9900K. With a little bit of undervolting, you can make that work. And when you've got a 360 in push-pull, not sure you really need that much cooling, but again, your build, uh, if, it, if you're happy with it, man, that's uh, completely up to you. Uh, down here, we have a custom loop in the Fantex Evolve Shift X. And when I see this, it just, it makes me want to do the exact same thing and put it in my lounge room and just stare at it instead of the TV. Because I mean, something like this, it's a complete show build. I know the thermal performance isn't going to be extremely good, uh, he's got a 240 mil at the bottom here, but I think a build like this, especially in a lounge room setup, would kind of be the best use of this case. And looks like I was wrong. I said he was using a 240, but he's using one 280 mil radiator and three separate 120 mil radiators. So that is super, super impressive and uh, makes me take back, you know, the comments on the bad thermal performance. Guess I should read the description before I talk about these builds. But yeah, that is super, super interesting. So he's got an 8700K overclock to 5.1 gigahertz. He's got some really high speed memory kit here as well. 4133, 16 gigabytes, and he's got the GTX 1080 Ti uh, Asus Poseidon Hybrid. So let's take a look at that. Cable management here is super, super good. He's got some kind of interesting sleeving going on there. And there's the Asus Poseidon card there, which is uh, one that I've wanted to get my hands on for a bit of testing, but they are quite expensive to buy. Um, and probably not my first pick, if I'm honest, if I was gonna put uh, a GPU water block in this rig. There's no point in having those fans there that just pushed against the glass, not getting much uh, airflow, and they're just creating a bit more unnecessary noise. Hopefully you can kind of just set those at zero RPM and forget about it at the end of the day. But uh, I would much rather see an RGB water block there instead. I think that would look quite a bit better than the Poseidon card. And honestly, for having three 120mm radiators in this loop uh, paired with a 280, uh, he's got quite a bit of room here. So uh, great job to Lambo SE30. This is a sick ITX PC, ITX if we can still call it that. I think it is above 20 liters. Um, but at the end of the day, it looks the part and I'd love to have this in my lounge room. All right, next up, let's take a look at this build from Julian. So this was posted on builds.gg, which I'm personally not too familiar with, but I believe it's a place where you can kind of share your own build and see uh, what builds other people are you know, kind of going with. But let's take a look at his build here. He's got the ROG Strix Z390i motherboard paired with the EK monoblock that is specifically for that board. And instead of kind of going with the kind of best uh, thermal and noise performance that you could possibly get from an end case build, which is what this is, he's kind of gone for a, more of a kind of show build. Uh, I believe he might use a tempered glass side panel as well. He's gone for hardline tubing as well, which is definitely quite difficult to do in the NK M1. Uh, and it does kind of increase the possibility that you're gonna get something wrong and maybe produce a leak. Personally, if you're gonna do an NK M1 custom loop, I always recommend kind of soft tubing and fitting as much radiator volume and space as you can. But if you wanna do kind of a show build like this, then this is a potential way to do it. You could also mount a 92 mil fan at the rear here, or even better, a 92 mil radiator, and then hook that up to the rest of the loop. 
and then get better thermal and noise performance again. That's what I would do personally, but this is your build at the end of the day. These are just suggestions. There's no point pulling everything apart and improving stuff if you're happy with it and it does what you need it to do. But overall, I could take a look at thousands of NKSM1 custom loops, especially ones with hardline tubing, and they would seriously never get old. And then scrolling a bit down, we have this uh, custom loop from Arthur Federson. So this is in the Slagger SV590, which I did review quite recently, and it's Definitely one of the more unique ITX cases that I've seen uh, on the review table because you can fit a 360 mil radiator inside, which is actually quite insane. Uh, but he's done a full hardline custom loop here. He's using the Ryzen 3900X on the ROG Strix X570i motherboard. He's using the RTX 2080 from EVGA and he's got the Hydro Copper kind of default water block on that. Overall, I think this is pretty impressive, uh, especially the cable management, which was one of the main issues that I had with this case because you end up with this kind of awkward gap between the motherboard and the power supply, uh, but he's managed to get around that with custom cables. I think one of the tips that I can give for hardline tubing in you know really tight compact cases like this uh, is you know don't try and make ambitious bends if you don't need to. What Arthur has done here is just, you know, if he needs to make a 90 degree bend here, just use fittings. It's not gonna make the build that much harder. In fact, um, you're most likely going to avoid leaks if you use a few paired fittings like he has here. Um, on the left of the CPU, he's got this kind of, you know, fairly relaxed bend. In that case, he doesn't need to use fittings. So again, he can kind of be a bit more relaxed there. So again, just don't be too ambitious with the bends if you're looking to do hardline tubing in an ITX case. There's no real reason for it unless you're really looking to show off you know, the tubing bends and everything like that, but it's not necessary. Uh, you can make an exceptionally clean looking build just by, you know, compromising with a few fittings instead, especially if you're planning on making them portable. Uh, I would recommend soft tubing or to use, uh, you know, fittings where it is absolutely necessary, like coming out of the CPU block here. And I quickly came across this build from uh, user MS with the NKSM1 V6, which demonstrates exactly what I was mentioning before in a previous NKSM1 V6 build, where you can easily relocate the power supply to the front of the case to allow a slightly larger fan for the uh, Noctua C14S cooler. Just wanted to really quickly show this because the NKSM1, as we know, is a very popular ITX case and it's becoming a lot more popular as time goes on. Uh, and the C14S is the largest CPU cooler that you can fit in this case. And then we have time for one last build and I thought I'd just finish off with something just a bit more modest. This one from Andrew, this is an NZXT H1 build using the Ryzen 5 3600 on the X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. He's got an EVGA RTX 2070 Super uh, XC, 32 gigabytes of memory clocked at 3600 megahertz. He's got quite a bit of storage there and he has also used uh, some small Noctua fans here just to help with the graphics card exhaust flow. I will be testing this very soon. I have um, an interesting video coming up soon with the NZXT H1 where I do try some of these kind of mods that improve airflow and kind of just improve the, the case in general. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that very soon. I actually have no idea how effective this is going to be. It could just pointlessly add noise to the rest of your build. Um, but yeah, we will try it out and I'm personally really interested to see how effective this is. But I think that'll wrap it up for today. Again, some really interesting builds from start to finish from you guys. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this becoming a monthly series, um, not just for ITX builds, we will do something different next month. Uh, so make sure you are following me on Twitter to kind of submit your build or be ready to submit your build if you do wanna be featured on next month's episode. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.